of you joining us. And we want to begin this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, Sandy Score is here from Towers Elementary School, Principal. Will you help us, please? I will. Thank you. Come on up to the podium. Thanks. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Uh, we need to um, adopt the agenda, but before we do so, I want to call on Mr. Lee. Yeah, um, I'd like to move item 14.1. 14.4, oh, I think. 14.4, okay, to, um, yes. we'll add a new 8.01 to the um, staff presentation and information. This is for um, Youth and Government Day. Is there a second? Second. Second, yeah. Okay, right. it's been moved and seconded that we make that um, revision to our agenda. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? And can, then can I get a motion for adoption of the uh, so moved. agenda? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the agenda as amended. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carried. Report of closed session. We have no official report out from closed session. So we will move on to staff presentation and information. And that item that we just brought forward, that is the approval for eighth grade students to participate in the City of Torrance Students and Government Day, um, is that item. And Cindy Scotto is in the audience and wanted to speak to that. Come forward, please. Thank you very much. Good evening. I just wanted to take this opportunity to come and um, thank the school board and, excuse me, the school district for your continued support of our Students in Government Day. We're in our 12th year. We're very proud of that. Uh, the program, uh, I'll give you some dates real quick. Our Students in Government Day will be May the 1st this year, 2018. Uh, we're doing a kickoff in December where we'll, we will go out and I will go out and meet the middle school principals and give them all the information. But of course, the school board and our district is invited to be part of our Students in Government Day, come to the council meeting that night. Um, it's a great program. Uh, I am one of the co-chairs and uh, the program was actually started by former Mayor Frank Scotto, former Mayor D. Hardison and myself. So we're very proud of what we've accomplished. And Dr. Mannon is one of our best cheerleaders. So uh -huh. thank you, Dr. Mannon. Thank you, and, and I write back at you, uh, Cindy, for continuing the program, and all, I know it involves a lot of work, so thank you for continuing that for the uh, benefit of our students. Okay, um, we do need to vote to approve that, though. Yes. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve having the uh, um, student, eighth grade students participate in the City of Torrance Students in Government Day. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. We will go forward. Um, and then back to our uh, regular staff presentation and information, we have a report from the Torrance Education Foundation, the Executive Director, Susan Swinburne. Hi, Good Susan. evening. Good evening. To the board and everyone. Um, I have an announcement to make about the programs that the foundation has been doing. Every fall for the last four years, we have offered the opportunity to Torrance Unified Teachers to submit applications for our STEM, STEM grant program. This program is designed to offer uh, grants of either $500 or $1,000 to teachers who have a desire to present STEM projects outside of the normal curriculum and need some funding to help do that. So we started this four years ago, and um, that year there were 20 grants and $20,000. This year we're making 65 grants for $50,000. And um, if I did my math right, I'm, I'm not a quant person, but I think I did my math right, that's more than a 300 
percent increase over the course of four years. Um, we're very happy to be able to make these funds available to our teachers who do fantastic work in the classroom and give over and above all of that outside the classroom to be sure our kids get extracurricular opportunities to engage in STEM. The programs include family STEM nights. This year, by the way, we're having 25 family STEM nights. Um, math wow. counts competitions, science olympiad competitions. Um, we've got some new programs that arrived after the first year, cyber, uh, cyber coding, and a new program this year, Stellar Explorers. And of course, we have our um, flagship robotics, which started with Torbots and has expanded to many other campuses in the district. So we're very, very happy to do this, and we thank our donors who helped to make this possible by joining Ed Foundation. And uh, we really thank the teachers who make the lives of our kids so so rich. That's it for now. Any questions? Terrific. No, same thing. Thank you so much for continuing that program and bringing those uh, marvelous, really innovative things to our students that they wouldn't otherwise have. So you really I should enrich also thank the lives of our students. I should also thank our STEM um, grants committee for yes. the time they yes. spent reviewing the applications and uh, filling in some blanks. It does take time and effort. It for does. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Okay, uh, next we have a report from the Torrance Council of PTAs, and that's the president of Torrance Council, Nanette Nolan. Hi, good Hi. evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you some of the good things we're doing around Torrance uh, through our PTAs. One thing I'm very excited to announce is that we have just a little over 13,000 members to date, so that's pretty exciting. I know we can do better. Um, when we join as members at our unit, I think what we're doing and saying is that we support our unit's efforts to um, fund and run art programs, STEM programs. We, uh, a lot of the elementary schools, maybe all of them. Um, we also run libraries. Uh, they, PTA usually funds and pays for field trips and educational assemblies, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So when you join at a unit level, you're saying I support your efforts and thank you. Um, on a much grander scale, joining as a PTA member means that you're standing with the PTA and the vision and the mission and saying that I believe in what you're trying to do on a much grander scale. Um, beyond the city of Torrance, at the state and national level, what we're doing is advocating for children. So helping to write bills, um, sending people to Sacramento and beyond, trying to get more dollars, <coughs> more funding, and um, more resources for our children not just in the city of Torrance, but all throughout the United States, all throughout California. So if you have not joined as a member, I strongly urge you to do so um, in one of two ways. You can always go to torrancecouncilofptas.org. That's a long one. Um, to the website, and under membership, there's an invitation to join. Um, beyond that, in an easy way, in a very friendly way, is going to your local school and just walking into the front office, well, being buzzed in, I guess, and asking for a membership envelope. Um, so that's one thing. Very excited about membership. Uh, earlier this month, the city council recognized uh, November as Homeless Families Awareness Month in the city of Torrance. That was a proclamation written by a couple of Torrance Council board members, and um, the sole intention was just to bring awareness to the ongoing and growing issue of homelessness and working poor families in the city of Torrance. Um, as you know, as I've spoken about before, and you've probably heard about before as well, um, Project Hope is our own initiative that we were doing at the Torrance, well, Torrance Council of PTAs and PTA units um, to basically, to ensure that homeless, to USD homeless children have basic resources. Um, we're actually getting ready to be doing a donation drive for personal hygiene items, uh, toiletries, um, and the like. We'll also be collecting things like Uber and Lyft gift cards, gas gift cards, um, just things that I think most of us kind of take for granted and are fortunate enough to have. <laughs> um, so we're excited about that. Um, I think that's, that kind of wraps it up. It's just kind of good news generally, but. Thank you. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Oh, I did. Um, Please. Now, um, the toiletry kits, <coughs> will you be collecting them like someplace or is oh, it a central place? Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh. Okay. I, it's so horrible. I follow behind Susan. She's so amazing at polish, and I think she's got these. <laughs> I really practiced. Um, uh, so at, her, at the Torrance Council of PTAs.org website, we actually have a, a spot that's um, 
underneath, I think it's like community concerns, there's a tab for Project Hope, and we actually speak about and have a sign up genius going for the various items that we're collecting for. Well, we also have a food pantry that we take collections for every month. So Alicia mm -hmm. Allen, who's the chairperson for that, mm -hmm. and any Torrance Council or PTA, I think, board member at any of the units would be able to put you in touch with somebody. So we're everywhere mm -hmm. at this point. So thank you. Okay. And you can always bring items to Torrance Council meetings. Oh, yeah. Because we're always We do special pickups. Okay. We're yeah. not picky. Thank, thank you. you. Um, can, I, can I ask a, re a request that you do bring that resolution about the uh, homeless uh, Students and Project Hope to us so that we can uh, similarly. Uh, yes, I know. I was PTA. waiting for the chairperson to make a decision whether we wait till and make November the official month next mm -hmm. year, or if she would be so kind as to let us maybe ask for the proclamation in December. So, okay. just waiting. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And our next item is introduction of the student representative to the board for the second quarter of 2017-18 and a report by that student, and it appears that he's here. And Dr. Dougal, will you introduce us to him? Yes, good evening, everyone. I am honored to welcome Connor, Connor Kurahashi, the ASB president from West High School. He's currently the West High president for the 2017-18 school year. His freshman and sophomore year, he was busy being the class historian, as well as playing in um, basketball, volleyball teams, as well as running cross country. If that wasn't enough, his junior year, he became the class president and helped to plan the prom, which we all know is a huge and big event. And he did a great job with that, as well as volunteer for Key Club. So he was spent his weekends not only planning for prom, but also volunteering at many events in the community. Uh, this year, Connor was elected as um, ASB president, and he has many grand ideas that I think he's going to be sharing with us later today. Uh, Connor, in the future, plans to major in environmental science um, to make the environment a better place for future generations. Um, please welcome Connor Kurahashi. Yay, welcome, Connor. Um, so at West High, uh, we had our first day of school assembly where we introduced the new administrators, and um, we had the band play, cheer performed, and um, advanced dance was also there on the field. Um, we during the assembly we give out free um, spirit wear, so then during the rallies we can have more spirit, and it's kind of a thing where uh, I kind of wanted more like uh, class spirit, so we were. We had the idea of just giving it out so then people would be more willing to um, <coughs> dress up and have more spirit. Um, we also had a club rush where it was a day where uh, all the clubs joined on the grass field in front of Building 3 and um, all the students walked through uh, picking out clubs that they uh, found interest in and um, it, was a really, it was a really good day. Um, in October, we had our first um, actual uh, f um, fall sports rally where we had a class comp, introduced fall sports, uh, we had drill perform and cheer perform. And then um, we, for fundraisers, uh, we helped out South High with a uh, collection drive to help um, Ivan Dawson Primary School with um, the, since like the hurricanes happened. Um, we helped collect clothes, school supplies, and some toiletries to help them in their um, recovery effort, efforts. We also helped with um, the Vegas victims in a bake sale. Uh, we made about $288, and we donated uh, $100 to Christina Duarte, uh, one of the, um, I believe, uh, Manhattan Beach uh, teachers, and um, the Las Vegas the Las Vegas Victims Fund, uh, we donated $188. Um, we also had our freshman elections and uh, our homecoming dance. Uh, our homecoming dance theme was uh, Moulin Rouge Paris. Uh, since our, our gym was in construction, uh, we had to do it in the pavilion and we actually had a really good turnout with um, a record-breaking ticket sale of 822 tickets sold. Um, for Halloween, uh, this year, since uh, another one of my ideas to um, have more spirit and have everyone interested in being a warrior and being interested in being and going to school, um, we had pumpkins uh, cut out um, with their name on it and attached a piece of candy on it for Halloween. So each student got a um, piece of candy for Halloween to enjoy. And then for 
Uh, upcoming events, we have our Powder Puff game. Uh, we are going to have a Winter Spirit Week, and I think we'll a thankful things for teachers, where we pass out some thankful gifts for them. Wow. Lots happening on campus. Um, anybody have any questions or comments? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Connor. We do hope that you will look at the agenda. And if there are items that you want to speak to, please do during the meeting. So just let us know. Um, I also want to know something really important that you mentioned a little bit about construction on campus. Mm -hmm. How has that been <laughs> this year? Um, loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. been, I feel like it's okay. It's, I heard that the um, the deadlines have been pushed back twice, so they are not on schedule all the time, but we're just hoping that the gym is open soon so we can have an indoor rally since the uh. outdoor rallies aren't as fun. Uh. That's construction. Yes. It yeah. always gets pushed back. Unfortunately. We do try our best to stick to a timeline, but there are things that do come up, so Beyond thank you for control. your understanding. Yep. Okay, well, keep us apprised of that. You provide a unique perspective as a student, so make sure you speak out. Okay, thanks. thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here. And um, last but not least, in terms of staff presentation and information, we have some good news student presentations. One from an elementary school and one from a middle school. And let's start with elementary, and that will be Dr. Kim. Thank you, President Reagans. It's my pleasure to introduce one of our student leaders from Towers Elementary, Owen Bentley. Can you please come on up to the mic? Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Joining Owen tonight is the principal of Towers, Ms. Sandy Scora. Hello, my name is Owen Bentley, and I'm the president of Ta Ta Student Council at Towers. Our student council is having a winter compassion project. We are learning about serving others and donating items to children less fortunate than us. Robert Ingersoll once said, we rise by lifting up others. We have an upcoming event at Towers, which is our Harvest Festival. This Saturday, November 18th, from 11 to 4, there will be games, our famous cakewalk, silent auctions, shopping at the marketplace, raffles, and food trucks. Most importantly, the money raised is going towards our goal of one-to-one -one Chromebooks in every classroom. If you are free this Saturday, come on down to Towers and have a fun-filled day. Yay. <laughs> I just wanted to comment. You mentioned the uh, uh, well-known cakewalk. I've heard really big things about your cakewalk, so can't wait to see what it looks like. Really impressive cakes from what I hear, so looking Good forward job. to that. Thank you. And then we have from Bertland Middle School, Dr. Dougal will introduce. Thank you. We're excited to hear from Bertland from Kim Lamb and Isabella Santana. And they're joined by their principal, Mr. Leroy Jackson. Hello, my name is Isabella Santana. And my name is Kim Lamb. We are both eighth graders attending Bertland Middle School. What exactly do we do at Bertland? Bertlin is full of clubs. The most famous clubs are the math club, the running club, robotics, journalism club, and junior scholarship. So first let's start with the math club. The math club is a group of students who go and compete against other schools and test their, math no their mathematical knowledge. The Bertlin math club has won many competitions and has brought home many awards. The running club is a new club at Bertlin. This club is pretty self-explanatory. The students who are part of this club run around Bertlin and West High, which is nearby. The the Robotics Club is a very big club at Bertlin. Students learn how to code and control robots. They also build their own robots and code commands for them. Then they take these robots to competitions. Among these clubs is the Journalism Club. This club writes about events going inside and outside of school. These articles are then published on the school newspaper. Many events have been conducted conducted with the first quarter of the school year with the help of Junior Scholarship. Junior Scholarship is a preparation for California's Federation of Jun Scholarship, and during the time we have done events such as the peer-to-peer -peer schedule walk, which helped kids who are in need, we were able to raise a total of over $500 and help who, need, who are kids in special needs at the hospital. Along that, we also help the staffs along the school 
and keep our school green with the recycling program that we already earned a hundred dollars in just one quarter from all the cans and bottles that we've found along campus and along that every day people from junior scholarship members would go to Towers Elementary, Victor, any other of the elementary school in our community and help out the staff there. There's something really new and exciting going on in Bertlin. For the first time we have a new tutorial schedule which is a, a, a time span of half an hour between fourth and fourth period and lunch on Thursdays. This is meant for students to catch up um, with their classes. They also attend meetings and participate in activities. During this time junior scholarship has their meetings. All the members meet up in the cafeteria for updates. Line dancing and cricket are now is now also available for students. The school also plans to bring in speakers in the near future. No, not only is it a great time for other activities on our campus, we, but it enables the students to study and work work in school instead of at home, which gives access to the teacher and peer reviews and educational resources which are not located outside of the school. Students get, are de designated to get a tutorial pass and send off to a certain teacher that they really need help with. Some teachers even start their lesson early, so students are able to get ahead of the game while others may be doing other activities. These are the activities that have been going on at Bertland. From the from the club activity, from the club activities, and from the clubs and extra activities, the whole and the whole new schedule. There's a lot going at Bertland Middle School. We are really glad and excited to be here to share our experiences at Bertland. Bertland is a wonderful campus, and students are constantly striving to improve what is going on around the school. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions, anybody? Okay, thank you ladies, thank you. thanks for being Good here. Job, and you, you students and uh, principals are welcome to stay if you like, or, or we will excuse you if you have homework to Go do. Go do your homework. Sorry, con <laughs> Go do your homework. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good night. Opens up a few seats here. Okay, our next section is oral communications for unscheduled hearings for non-agenda items. And I, I think that I've categorized the uh, cards that we've received here. Uh, the Board of Education welcomes input from the public. Thank you for being here. In order to discuss district business in an orderly manner for the privacy and safety of the speakers and to help staff respond more directly, the board policies require that public <coughs> presentations to the board comply with certain procedures, including speakers to non-agenda items may address only items that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Time allotted for such presentations is uh, limited to thir three minutes. Total time allotted for public input on non-agenda items is limited to 30 minutes. A speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. When addressing the board, speakers are requested to state their name, address the president from the podium, and adhere to the applicable time limits. Complaints against employees or students will normally be heard in closed session, and the district's complaint procedure should be followed before discussion with the board. The board may remove disruptive individuals and order the room cleared if necessary. Any person who willfully disturbs any public school meeting is guilty of a misdemeanor. So I have nine cards. Um, and I think they all are um, non-agenda items, those we've already taken care of. Okay. Um, so I think we, st if that's three minutes each, we have a, within our 30 minute limit. So we're good to go here. And let's begin with um, some folks from the South Bay Republican Women's Federated, Catherine Endo Roberts and Luann Flaherty. Come on forward, please. Flaherty? Yes. I just realized I read that wrong. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Lou Ann Flaherty. I'm the president of the South Bay Republican Women Federated. <laughs> and I'm Catherine Endo Roberts. I'm the chair of the Mamie Eisenhower Library Project. Okay. One of our goals as the Republican women is to support the Mamie Eisenhower Eisenhower Literary Program, and that means supporting the local high schools with a donation to your libraries. 
So this year we have four of Condoleezza Rice's new book to uh, give to each one of the Torrance High Schools. So we just wanted to bring that to your attention and say we'd like to uh, give them to your library. Oh, wow. terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you very, Thank much. You very, very much. Okay. I just wanted to say too that we um, know that we, we we found out that we had to come here instead of going straight to the high school. So I made a boo boo at first. So <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Thank you for coming. And actually, Dr. Dougal will take those and distribute them to our schools for you. Okay. Unless you want to take them to each individual school, and you can take them to the office and deliver it yourself if you like. We'll do it. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank great. You. Cool. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. That's a good start. Thanks. Um, our next person, let's see. I got this one out of order, sorry. Is um, Aaron Mance. Hi, come on forward. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Unfortunately, I'm not quite as organized as last time, but I will try not to ramble. Um, I was able, fortunately, to attend the 7-Eleven committee um, last night concerning the sale of, uh, or possible sale, of Hamilton Adult School. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm not sure if this is the correct forum, but through that, I ended up with questions or concerns from that. Um, one of which has actually been addressed here before about um, not looking for possible places for the North Horns Little League and the North Horns Girls Softball League fields to be moved to if, if that happens until it happens. And then last night they also addressed um, any students that are at the adult school now, where will they go, and the um, special education people. And my concern about that is if you wait until it's basically done, then you're putting everything on hold until you're able to find some place. So is it not possible to, without having to do, of course, studies, and because I realize that costs money, but to look around and say, well, this is a possibility and this is a possibility. So when that time comes, you have at least found possible locations that then a study may be done that might help to speed up the process just a little bit. Um, Another thing that was mentioned by one of the gentlemen at the meeting last night was um, that they were really um, open to hear from the community about this process. Living only six blocks from Hamilton Adult School, if I hadn't seen on Facebook the page by the Save Our Fields group, I would never have known that this was even a possible happening. So I don't think the community has any idea that that property may be sold and apartments, God forbid, or townhouses built there. And that became even more, more of a concern to me last night trying to get to the meeting when it took me five minutes to get from Van Ness and Artesia to Hamilton Elementary, which is about half a mile. There was that much traffic and if you had that much more homes, in that area, it's just going to exponentially increase the traffic in that area, which is already bad enough. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I just, for my information, those are questions that she can take to the 7-Eleven committee and address to you folks at that point. Yes, and it would be in the report. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, next we have Margaret Telemontes. Did I say that correctly? Sorry. Close enough. <laughs> Hi. 
Good Hi. evening, school board members and staff. Um, my name is Margaret Alamantes, and I'm here on behalf of the girls softball and little leagues in North Torrance over the potential sale of the Hamilton site. And I'm here tonight to inform you that our leagues have been actively involved in all of the meetings that have been held, the joint TUSD City of Torrance meeting as well as the 7-Eleven committee meeting. Um, and we are here to tell you that we will prevent in any way possible the sale of this site. And this is for various reasons. First of all, the district has never explained to the public why Hamilton was selected over Levy and Griffith as a potential surplus site. We've requested in September 19th a public records request for this, and we've never received feedback from the district nor the 7-Eleven committee of particularly why Hamilton was selected. And as residents in North Torrance, we would like to know why Hamilton, why was Levy and Griffith not considered? Additionally, the district has done an extremely poor job in involving the stakeholders from day one of this process. You followed the bare minimum of the law, and we're aware that you are following the bare minimum of the, wall, of the, of the law to include the community. You really truly haven't engaged us as stakeholders in this process, and the community is starting to feel left out. By not allowing any of the NTLL or softball members on the 7-Eleven committee Again, we feel very left out of this process, and in times of public scrutiny, not letting us participate, we feel like this has been a very non-transparent process, and again, we're just trying to get information, and we want to be involved in, in local government and what's going on in our community. So again, from day one, PR has not been very good on behalf of the district. Thirdly, you're targeting a lower socioeconomic part of Torrance to remove educational and recreational resources from, and if this site is in fact sold, North Torrance will suffer this resource, and we're, again, very concerned about this loss. We don't believe that, that South Torrance, the more affluent neighborhoods of South Torrance are being impacted. Again, we feel like this is being targeted in North Torrance. Um, we do feel this is an egregious act on behalf of the district towards North Torrance. Lastly, the leagues have been in communication with elected officials, including Supervisor Hahn, Assemblymember Muratucci's office, Senator Allen, Mayor of Torrance, as well as various council members from City of Torrance, who have all agreed to assist us in saving our fields. We are prepared to purchase a portion of the land under the Naylor Act, um, including funding from County Park Measure A bond funds and entitlement and competitive grants, as well as private foundation assistance. We are currently mobilizing to canvas North Torrance households with door hangers and flyers to gain even more support of our community. So I'm here tonight to let you know that this is a big issue for North Torrance residents. We don't want this happening, and we will be preventing in any way possible the sale of this site. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have Paul Pribola. My name is Paul Pribola. Thank Pribella, you, Board, sorry. for hearing me. I've been a resident through North Torrance for the fi last 15 years. And as I expressed to you the last time I was here, you understand my relationship with the baseball fields, but I'm not here for that tonight. I'm here as a resident. I'm very concerned about the possible sale of Hamilton School District or school site. There's several reasons and it's been brought up tonight. There's been a lack of information that has been provided to the community which that school serves. I have been out canvassing many, many, many residents and most are unaware of what's going on, which I find concerning. The other thing is, is that when I talk to these residents, so many of them have had either classes or baseball or softball, some type of affiliation with that school site. And I don't think that it's being taken serious how much that school site does for that community of North Torrance. There's a couple other things too. We've requested some information and it, the lack of information that's being provided to us leads us to believe that what is going on, what is being hidden. The 7-Eleven committee, we have requested for us to have a representative. We live in the area. We use that school site. We deserve that, but we've been denied. So why? Why have we been denied that request? The other thing is, 
on the 7-Eleven committee with the attorney being present constantly and some of the things that are going on there, I tend to believe and a lot of other people tend to believe that the decision's already been made to sell that site. You guys aren't there to, to determine if that site's viable. You guys are there to justify the decision that's already been made, which really, like I said, hurts me and a lot of the other people in the community. There's a lot of people in this community that are willing to stand up to save that site. Believe me, a lot more than you think. And we've been taking the process and saying, you know what, how do we stop this from happening? I'm taking a different approach. I don't necessarily need to stop it. I just need to stall it until November 6th of 2018 when the elections come around. There's three board seats available. And we can go and we can get this community together and we can put members in on the board that support us, that inform us, that are taking our interest into consideration. Think about that. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say I very seriously understand and uh, take into consideration how important that facility is. I live about half a mile from there. I took mommy and me classes at that school. My children played Little League for a short period of time at those fields. So I actually am very attached to the area. So um, it is actually very paramount in my uh, consideration. So keep that in mind. Uh, next is uh, Leslie Slider. Good evening. Thank you for hearing me this evening. Um, as she said, Ms. Raggins, um, I am Leslie Slider, and I'd like to share with you tonight the impact that Torrance teachers have had on my life. I transferred to Fern Avenue Elementary School in the middle of the fourth grade. New to the neighborhood, I was shy and unsure. Mrs. Koga, my new teacher, made me feel at home and quickly discovered my love of reading and writing. She encouraged me to share my writing with my classmates because she knew that's what I needed. In fifth grade, Mrs. Hathaway recognized my desire for challenge. She even had me tested for GATE. And even though I didn't qualify, she let me participate in GATE activities anyway because she knew that's what I needed. <coughs> Mrs. Kobe was my homeroom teacher at Madrona. She realized that I had a flair for the dramatic. And uh, she encouraged me to act out my history report as Joan of Arc. Also at Madrona, Mr. Burke knew that I struggled with math. And he made a point of stopping by my desk and telling me a joke every day. Mrs. Lopresto insisted that I take newspaper because she knew that I'd be forced to revise before I was allowed to publish. They all knew what I needed. At Torrance High, Mrs. Warden took me to a new story writing competition. Mr. Liebig offered me extra credit in physical science because I was bored and too polite to say so. Mr. Slater and Mrs. Duval were passionate about theater, and it was a gift to have someone love something the way that I loved something. They all knew what I needed. Later at THS, I was a struggling student teacher, and Mrs. Clark, my master teacher, listened to me, consoled me, and advised me with patience and understanding. When I decided to coach, Mrs. Esfahani gave me a crash, court, a crash course in competitive speech and debate and taught me how to manage my team. They knew what I needed. My children, JC and Dashiell, attend Ford Avenue now, and we are fortunate that their teachers also give them what they need. Mrs. Bravo, who taught JC phonics because she has trouble spelling. Mrs. Santame, who turned JC's poor attitude about writing into a passion. And Mrs. Garcia and Mrs. Gosman, who have made learning fun for both of my children. And for Mrs. Fawasis, who is so, so patient with Dashiell, who is a very wiggly little boy who struggles with reading. I am here today because of a long line of teachers who knew what I needed when I needed it. They were knowledgeable, passionate, hardworking, and most importantly, intuitive. A teacher's intuition isn't developed overnight, but over years. I aspire to grow my own intuition so that I can continue to give my students what they need. In my nine years as a student, my 17 years as a teacher, and my five years as a parent in the Torrance Unified School District, I have learned that there is nothing in the classroom more important than we teachers. Not only do we write plans and deliver lessons, we counsel, we mentor, we challenge, we discipline, we encourage, we provide for, we hold accountable, we praise, and we love our students. It's teachers 
are why Torrance Unified has outstanding test scores and over a 96% graduation rate. Both, which draw home buyers and businesses to our community and benefit our local economy. Please be aware of the positive impact that Torrance teachers have on the city of Torrance and value us accordingly because it's what we need. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're running out of time. Their time is being taken up here. I highly value the teachers that are, are here in our school district and have for the 15 years that I've been on the board. I, there are no more important people um, in our school district. So um, we have four people left, and let, how about if we have them go ahead and line up so we can try to get you all in within the 30 minutes. Alan Glassband, Esau Beruman, uh, Stephanie Elwood, and Mark Pesusich. So let's go ahead and go in that order from uh, the podium, please. Alan, first. Good evening, Hi. board members, staff members. Long time no see. Saw you guys, some of you guys last night. At the 7-Eleven committee, I'm Alan Glassband. I'm a North Torrance homeowner. I'm a board member at the Little League, realtor. I'm a teacher uh, for LAUSD. And... Uh, uh, first of all, I want to say how disappointed I am in the school district and the support that the school board has given. Um, after watching the last board meeting when the teachers came up and asked for better books and they were told that they had some Google Drive for English classes from, and textbooks from 1997, I was frankly I was shocked and appalled that we're using 1997 books the year that the California content standards came out. And we can't afford new books in Torrance. That's pretty sad. For the price of our homes, that's sad. Anyway, I'm not even here about that. Um, here to read the mission statement. I have something prepared. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys that personally. As a parent, I hope that my kids can get new books by the time they're in high school, which will be uh, seven more years. Um, the Torrance Unified School District, this is the mission statement strives to ensure that each and every student is educated and prepared to succeed in life. There are some like, really good examples of that here tonight, and I've heard some awesome stuff from the teachers. Um, we're dedicated to maximizing individual potential and developing lifelong learners who will be contributing to members in a global society. I'm here to talk about the Torrance Adult School, which we're, we were, have been told for the last few months that it's not about the baseball field, it's not about the softball field, it's about the whether or not that site has educational value to the school district. And I'm telling you, the school district is the people in the school district, not just the board members who need to figure out where the next funds are coming from. It's a resource that we can't just sell and then go get some other time. Like there is no other place to go buy land if we need a school building. Where are we gonna do that in the future for less money? So um, the sc adult school has over a thousand students, I don't remember off the top of my head, but we saw the numbers last night. We talked to four, me and the president from our league, talked to four students, just random people while, after our meeting. Hey, did you know that the site was gonna be sold or possibly sold? No, we didn't know that. Well, would you like to drive over to Levy? Where's that? Um, over in South Torrance, where's that? Um, almost by the little uh, Torrance Memorial about there, over there. Oh no, I can't drive that far. I mean, this is, these are comments that we've heard from many people. The four people we saw, one guy actually lives over by Levy and goes to Hamilton to take an adult school class, which isn't offered there. Um, there are not enough rooms in the other two adult schools to absorb the people from Hamilton Adult School, which we've heard on the 7-Eleven committee by the director of Torrance Unified Adult Schools. And we've been told in a flippant attitude that adults can take classes in strip malls, that adults can go take classes in empty classrooms at nighttime. And as a teacher, I, like I shared last night at the 7-Eleven committee, I'd be appalled to come in my room, which I have to after SAT testing on Saturdays, and the desks are all rearranged, my stuff's all over the place. Like I'm like spending the first 20 minutes of the day trying to get my classroom back in shape physically before I can even address the 43 students I have in front of me in more than one language. So um, I'm going to read for the remainder of my time some other people's words 
too about fine, this. Still. I have more mm -hmm. than 30 seconds. One left, more minute, yeah. One more minute, perfect. I'll read fast. This is uh, from a Torrance resident. Yeah, that's for Donald Reach. Here we go. Elena G. From 616-2016, I'm finishing up my pharmacy technician program here at Torrance Adult School, and I would have to say this was the best decision I made. At first, I was a little hesitant about taking the program here because I didn't know if the price have anything to do with not being accredited or would teach me the same thing that a $12,000 program would teach me at a trade school. But I'm extremely happy that I made the right decision. I'm now finishing up with an A and starting it and an internship next week. I can't believe that a little investment around a thousand dollars in three months would change in my life. I am soon to be a licensed pharmacy technician, but this course wouldn't have been easy if it wasn't for my teacher. She's absolutely fantastic. She's so loving, caring, compassionate, and definitely knows her stuff. It goes on and on. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> just pages of, of comments from pe students who are at the school, who have been at the school, and um, if the 7-Eleven committee's purpose and the board is to truly decide if that's sur surplus. Please uh, actually listen to the community, not just shake your head. Okay, thank you. Um, next is Esau Barriman. Let's try to get the rest of these. Good evening, board members. I started looking online at CalPads, data from last year. I know it's a little old, but that's all the data that's on the CDE website. I started breaking down schools by are they north of the 190th or south of 190th Street. I'm assuming north of 190th is North Torrance. Looked at free or reduced lunch. These are the kids who are probably the neediest, who need the most help, the most support. The community that probably needs the most support. When I look at the district as a whole, 26%, 26.1% of the students in the whole district are on free or reduced lunch. When I looked at the school south of 190th, 21.8% of the kids are free or reduced lunch. When I looked at the schools north of 190th, to whopping 39.7%. That's almost double. I'm not sure how the aquatic center, last time we were here, and you know, we were scared that we we're going to lose our fields. There was uh, all these sites. And then, you know, the board said, let's look at all the options, let's make a decision. If the board is so strapped for money that they need to balance a budget on this and they need to sell surplus property, why not look at every every adult school in the in the city? Why just say you know what? Let's go with North Torrance. Let's go with Hamilton. Let's balance our budget on the backs of North Torrance. It's not okay. Why wasn't Levy picked? Is it because there's a connection there with a board member having a daughter play or or family there? I don't know. Why is it just Hamilton again? It's why not have them separate? Why not have like a Central Torrance Adult School and one that's in the northern part of town? That would make sense to me. Levy is just as big, or if not bigger, than Hamilton. Griffith is a little bit smaller. I haven't been to Griffith, or you know, but it's important for us to have that. It's important for the community to have that. It's important for community members to feel like they can walk up. And I think that you know, stronger homes, stronger families, stronger adults, educated adults, bring bring a lot more support to their students. And at the end of the day, we're in it for our kids. So it's very important for us to continue that help at North Torrance. It's not okay to keep balancing the budget on the North Torrance side. Thank you very much. Thank Good evening. You. My and name is Stephanie. Stephanie Elwin. I am a Torrance resident, a taxpayer, and a teacher. I've been teaching at West High for almost 20 years. And I am very proud of my teaching career, and I'm very proud of my students. I'm dismayed as a taxpayer to know how much money this district seems to be spending on a lot of things that many teachers find a little questionable. We've had trainings that don't seem to mean much, seem to be a waste of time. We have been overloaded with so much work. Our workload has been increased exponentially, and we're tired. We're really exhausted. We're trying so hard to do a good job for our students, but it's getting increasingly harder. When I meet colleagues as I'm walking to my classroom and we say, hi, how are you? The word is exhausted. And then I say, I'm exhausted, and I get from them, me too. And that's pretty much what we hear. I don't think the morale has ever been this low. I don't think the frustration level has ever been this high. And I'm disappointed and I'm worried. 
Thank you. Thank you. And last, last but not least, we have Mark Pasusic. Mr. Uh, P. Yes, Mr. P. Hi. You've been here before. <laughs> um, Mr. Pasusic, uh, this is part of the Pasusic family. These are my twins. My youngest one's in the crowd. He's a little shy. He's usually not shy. Um, and uh, I want to kind of echo some of the ideas that have been said here tonight. Um, I've been working in Torrance for nearly 20 years. I love teaching. Tim Stowe, you know that. You were my principal. I saw your daughter a couple weeks ago. She came down, visited Mr. P. Don, you mentioned your son was in my class. There's no question about it. I love teaching. I love working in Torrance. Um, but there is a disconnection, a big disconnection. And it's not me. It's, it's elementary school. It's with the couple hundred people who are out here tonight. You can't ignore that. Right? It's part of the disconnection if you choose to ignore the hundreds of people, teachers who are outside here tonight. And the disconnection, I think, is, and I'm saying this out of love. I care about you guys. I care about the district. I'm not doing this because I'm you know, just angry and argh. I want to fix this disconnection. But there's a disconnection between the reality of the classroom and the theory, I think, that goes on here. And that's not meant to, yeah. it's not out of hate or anything like that. It's just genuine Let's concern. Let's not waste time. Yeah. So um, I think that what we need to do is we need to make that connection work better. Plato, my history teacher, talked about this in Allegory of the Cave. Very, and you should go back and read it. I read it twice a year. Um, and we just read it a couple weeks ago in my class. He talked about education, the value of it. He talked about shadow education and reality education. He's talking about this 2,500 years ago, about you're talking about stuff, but then there's also the reality of what's going on. I think us teachers, and you hear it all the time, we talk for passion for a reason. We're in it, right? And we don't want to just hear, thank you very much. Come, right? See us. And don't say, oh, we got a program for you. We don't need more programs. We're totally done with all that, right? We need, in all sincerity, we need stuff taken off our plate. And we're not lazy people. I mean, ask these little guys. I'm up till midnight, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, right? And then, you know, occasionally emailing a teacher, what the hell am I doing? And then a teacher says to me, Jasmine Quinn, math teacher at West High, oh, I got your email. Oh, when would you get it? 3 o'clock in the morning. She wakes up at 3. I'm going to bed at 3. This is not normal. This is not good. We are working really, really hard. Okay, so I think we got to make that connection and we got to realize things are not working really, really well. And lastly, I want to say, teacher, I love teaching it, but I love these people more. And I'm entitled to these people and my wife. A lot of things are going on. People are stressed out. Divorces happen for these reasons, stuff like that. So please, we need to establish a dialogue, right? Don't come and visit us and check mark. We check West High and now let's go to this school. Come talk with us consistently. And really, more importantly, I would say listen. You know, you made some good points. We're the experts. We know what the hell we're doing. And if you don't believe us, come and stay in my class for a while. You're welcome anytime. So please, uh, this is opening the people outside here today. I can't speak for them entirety, but for myself, I want to open a discussion. And we need to fix this disconnection because it's out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, folks. Uh, appreciate your being here. You're welcome to stay for the uh, balance of the meeting if you like, or if you need to uh, go, we will understand, but we do appreciate your input. Um, we will move on to our discussion action items uh, and instructions to the public. I don't have any cards for any of our items coming up. Oh, hang on. Let's take a moment and let them filter out here. I guess we didn't see the folks outside. Really quick, and this isn't a revolution, but with the French Revolution, I always teach this stretch. Mm -hmm. And eventually what's going to happen, you ask Lauren, she'll tell you how many rubber bands I break. We've got to keep this in mind. We need to get it right and talk, and I think we can do it together. So okay. look forward to talking. Thanks, Mark. OK, so if I have no cards. I don't think I need to read the instructions again for uh, doing public comment on discussion action items. Our first item is nominations for California School Boards Association Delegate Assembly. Is there anyone on the dais that's interested in uh, participating in the Delegate Assembly this year? No, thank you. Um, no, it uh, meets twice a year. 
and it's the governing body for CSBA. Uh, no, it's usually Sacramento and San Diego, I think, isn't it? That's what it says. Normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mark, do you want to uh, highlight the... Uh, classic kind of scenario where you you go through you go through policies and of CSBA and you go through the various regulations and you vote on different issues and things like that so I mean it's one of those governing bodies it's kind of a standard set up but it's interesting you meet a lot of people and uh, you, you know, go through a lot of discussions about the various issues and things like that are you thinking about it mr. Lee I'm just trying to drum up support okay Okay, well, if anyone is interested, uh, come forward and bring your, you do have to submit a number of materials uh, to be eligible, and then it goes to CSBA, and then there's a vote, et cetera, et cetera. So please uh, let us know if you uh, want to pursue that. Next is um, approve 10.3, approval for submission of plans to the Division of the State Architect for Adams Elementary School. Torrance Elementary School and Victor Elementary School modernization projects. I make and a motion. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we um, approve those plans, and we will have a presentation. It looks Dr. like in Dr. from Dr. Stowe. Thank you, Mr. Higgins, members of the board. <laughs> um, we had uh, three different meetings at each of the schools, uh, looking at the modernization that'll take place next summer. And so prior to the Division of State Architect uh, submittal, we've got um, Phyllis St. George from HMC Architects, who is part of that design team. Uh, the met with the principals. We'll, we'll go through uh, briefly each of the projects. Phyllis. Thank you. Okay. There are three projects, um, uh, next three project modernizations um, up for uh, DSA approval. I can't really read the... I can't really read the screen. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Adams first. But um, for this is Adams. I really can't read any of it. Um, on the site scope, it's um, accessibility, parking accessibility, um, ramps. I'm kind of ad libbing. I'm sorry. I really can't read what's up there, but I kind of know the scope of work. Um, uh, fire alarm. Is there? Oh, it's very small, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, we should have yeah, given her a closer computer. Sorry. Okay. Replacing the irrigation controller with the current standards, access site compliance, accessible parking. Phil's mic. Oh, did the mic get knocked off when accessible drinking yeah. fountains, a path to travel upgrades, asphalt and concrete replacement, uh, removing asphalt sidewalks and replacing with concrete, site drainage improvements, site security lighting, uh, new music and um, art modular classrooms, and the new science modular classroom. Uh, where is the Let's science see. modular? Number nine? Nope, that's the one. Inside the uh, the classrooms, the new fire alarm system throughout the campus, new lighting in permanent classrooms, uh, new pendant lights uh, for district standards, lights to have motion sensors, new lighting in restrooms, uh, replace windows and window frames. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, flooring replacement in the portables with new VCT, exterior. Um, painting of portable buildings and permanent, paint interior of permanent buildings, upgrade restrooms, new, ro new room identification signage throughout, provide electrical infrastructure and mounting location for future projector and flat screen TV. It's the standard modern Right, it's basically the same that we've done throughout the other projects. Where's Last the science lab, people. though? Is that P1? Yeah, it's that red building. Mm -hmm. there, one is the music and one is science. Okay. Way up there on It's down at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. Next to P1. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, formal matrix, which basically 
describes the scope of work under each of the bond measures. The next school, let me see if I, I'm sorry. Torrance Elementary School. Torrance Elementary. Um, it's basically the, um, the same scope of work for um, site. Just a reminder, Torrance Elementary School was the school which was ranked as the school site that was in the best condition when all of our schools were ranked. It's a brick school. It's a brick school. It is. And so there, there actually a lot of work has been already completed at Torrance. Okay. Yes, I believe in this one. The windows were already replaced, so they're not being replaced in, in this one. All the restrooms except one set, all the windows have already been redone. Right. But new fire alarm, the new interior lighting, um, identification signage, uh, painting interior and exterior buildings. Um, the upgrade to restrooms. The and, aquatic uh, center isn't on the. Uh, no, site that's scope. not this. <laughs> it looks different than this now. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, in all the classrooms too, there are two uh, teacher workstations with data and electricity and that sort of thing. And again, that's just the formal matrix for that scope of work. And last one is Victor. Again, an Albrecht school. Yeah, it's, it's basically a duplication of all the same scope of work. And at Victor, um, we'll, we'll be needing to put a fire hydrant on campus uh, per the meeting with DSA. Uh, when we're looking at this for the placement of the science labs so that you can see down there on the, the south side of the, the blacktop. Right. The yellow buildings that say not in scope? What, what uh, the that? YMCA buildings. Is that the Y buildings? Yes. Wow. It assumed so. Yeah, and the interior of the classroom is basically the same thing. Fire alarm, lighting, um, painting inside and out. Um, Room identification, upgrade to restrooms, floor replacement in the portables, and the teacher workstations. So the last three. Mr. There you go. All right. And all these uh, would be ready to submit to DSA in the next couple of weeks based on your approval. With a real quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Two, three days max. <laughs> yes. Are there any other questions? No. Anybody? Yeah, two of the three of them are brick schools. And right. That helps. Did they ever determine whether it was Adams or John Adams? Ted Adams. That's the whole. Yeah, I, 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 I believe the Yeah, I believe the correct title oh, is John, John Adams. Adams. There's always talk that it was never called John Adams. It was just called Adams. Yeah, I think on the documents it's <laughs> John Adams. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can tell you that the uh, PTA that's been there for many, many years is called John Adams PTA. Yeah. So. Good. I'll make a motion to approve. Right, we don't, we don't, we don't know nothing. So I'll, I'll second that. No, I don't think you need one. Good. No. Good okay. discussion, well, actually. It, we actually do need to approve, do we? Need we? It? You have we a have motion a motion and a, and a second. second. We already oh, we did that, and then she did the presentation. And no, no other questions, comments, anything? Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the submission of plans to the DSA for Adams, Torrance, and Victor Elementary Schools, the last three elementary schools. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ten Eisen years. Uni. All right. From the school board. Be Send them forth. Years. Thank you. Thank you. Nine years since Y and Z passed. Yes. I'll make Set a motion flu. to approve general functions consent items 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes, that's it. Second. Anybody want to consider anything individually? Mm -hmm. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve all consent items through 18. Um, and I guess aside from 
14.4 that we already did pass. Uh, so we're beginning with 12 all the way through 18. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. All right. All of the consent has been passed. Next item is the board calendar. Um, there's lots of things coming up in this school year. We're only a little bit into the school year, so check out all the things that are coming up for our students and our schools. And next we have comments from members of the Board of Education. And our representative to SoCal Rock is Mr. Wormer. Do you have anything to report, sir? We did not have a meeting since the last time we met, so That's no. That's what I thought. Okay. So we will move to other comments from other board members. Anybody have anything they uh, wanted to uh, discuss, comment on? Nothing? Well, I have happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Yeah. Happy Turkey Thank Day you. coming up. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I do have a few, just a few things. I have some uh, classified anniversaries um, for 10 years of accredited service. We have Lawrence Denson, Diane Donahue. Larry Garcia, Svetlana Soy, and Anita Winsell. And then for 20 years of accredited service, we have Nafisa Ali, Mary Ellen Behan, Heidi McQueen, and name rings a bell, in the district office, and Kevin Roller. So thank you folks for uh, working with our students and keeping our schools working efficiently and effectively. And um, I wanted to share just really quickly that I, I had the opportunity to go to North High School to the JROTC Dining Inn where they honored veterans in the area and had <coughs> them um, come in for a dinner and actually to uh, have a program with the young students and a 93-year-old? I thought he was 96. Oh, 96-year-old gentleman. Who went to oh, high school with Louis see. and was talking about his experience in having been at Pearl Harbor when the bombing occurred. Uh, the kids were actually pretty enthralled and in fact they came up afterwards and were uh, um, enthusiastically questioning him about his experiences and he was very clear about his recall and uh, the things that uh, he thought they should be doing to sort of further the uh, things going on in our country right now. And then there was also a veterans recognition thing this past Friday from the Social Services Commission in Torrance, and it was a really nice event. And I know that a number of our schools also had uh, events with uh, their student bodies and their PTAs and their school staff that were honoring our veterans. So it was really nice to see that sort of uh, group spirit going on in our community to honor people that have done so much for, their, for our country. And that's all I've got. And Mrs. Um, Deutsch, you oh, had your... Well, I, I just wanted to um, congratulate Dr. Mannon on his um, honor last mm -hmm. night um, at the Torrance... Help me out here. Yes. Performing, Performing Arts, Arts Consortium. Consortium. Uh, and, and, and Nancy Mannon as well. So I just wanted to congratulate both of you on uh, an amazing honor. And I know that you and uh, Nancy have been very active in the community and supporting the arts. So very well deserved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, it was a special award because it's the D. Hardison Award. It was that, that's even the D. Hardison Award. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Don, were you on, still on council still. at that point when uh, the TPAC was created? You remember? And the D. Hardison Award, because D. we used to almost personally award it every year. It was, it it was, was so post to her. her becoming. It was post her being mayor. Mm. So she ceased. I went off the council in 2000. She went off as mayor in 2002. Oh, okay. So it was okay. after that. So. And, and the last thing I wanted to mention is I just wanted to do a shout out to all the students that that did their uh, presentations um, this evening and to welcome you. Um, to me, that's. One of the reasons I do this mm -hmm. is to see uh, the awesome things that our school district is doing for our students. And so, um, thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Reagan's one other comment. Yes, sir. Um, last night, uh, there, were, there were many awards that were actually oh, given. Yes. Not, not just the D. Hardison Award. And uh, two of our students uh, performed uh, poems last night that they had written. Uh, and both were great. Um, and one was Sarah Wormers, Mr. Wormers' oh, daughter, who, who did an excellent job last night. 
and uh, to push TPAC a little bit, um, each of those students received $250, which they didn't know they were actually going to receive last oh, night. So that, that was uh, in, indeed an experience for both of them, who, again, did a great job. The other was Robert Kang from West High School. I explained to Sarah that she could now drop out of school and make a living as a poet. <laughs> and she didn't think that was a good idea and went to school anyhow this morning. So I tried. No honorarium for your award, Dr. Manning? No honorarium for <laughs> Nobody had a, he has a magnificent medal that they gave him. It and it has oh, D's picture on it. <coughs> and it's a beautiful silver, silver medallion, actually. And, and yeah. And, oh, and, and, oh, yes. And two or three different things he can put on a shelf and dust. <laughs> and then they'll make you one of those big kind of Cut -outs? toaster Trophy. things they had on the walls of the past oh. recipients. Oh, okay. I guess. Sure I was trying to that. figure out what that was. Yeah, like the big ones behind yeah. you guys that they were, uh, <laughs> they were part of the decoration. This was all held in the uh, lobby of the Armstrong um, Theater, so a very impressive ceremony. Thank you for bringing that up. That was nice of you to mention that. Okay. Well, thank you. Nice. It was. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. I always get